If you're watching this video, you probably want to get better at Rust, or you have some sort of interest in Rust, or you're just here to watch and figure out how bad Serial Overdrive is at that game called Rust. Anyways, what I'm going to be doing in this video is I'm going to be telling you guys 10 tricks and tips to make you just a little bit better at this game we love and hate called Rust. So let's jump into it, let's get into it, and let's get you guys better. But first off, make sure you hit the like and the subscribe button because I'm going to be doing more videos like this, giving you guys some good tips, hints, and everything like that. So first off, let's get into sort of the most helpful tip that you're going to get in this guide. I hate it when people put these tips at the end, so let's just get it out of the way right off the bat. And if you jump to the end, sucks to be you. This tip is how you fast loot in Rust. So a lot of people are going to say, oh, you just hit the hotkey called H and then you can fast loot. Well, that's true, but there's a way to loot faster. And a lot of players, even with thousands of hours, still aren't doing this. So go over to options, go to your controls, go over to binds, and then just scroll down until you see hover loot, and then just change that H to left click or left command. That's gonna allow you to fast loot just like this, and now you're playing like a pro, or at least looting like a pro. It's that easy, it's that simple, it's the fastest way you can up your game. Next up, let's go to options, okay? And then we're gonna go over to image effects, okay? So what you're gonna wanna do here is you're gonna wanna go to motion blur and turn that off. I left it on in one video, I got so much shit about it, and honestly, I deserve it. After that, let's go over to options and then look at streamer mode. That's gonna change your character's name, so this is a way that you can make two characters in one server one of your characters can be an asshole and one of them can be cool you don't know who's attacking your neighbors it's that asshole called Corin. that's not you that's not serial overdrive looks like you that sucks but it is what it is anyways next up you're gonna see here i'm looting a monument and this is sort of a fast way to get metal fragments this is only going to be used early game because a lot of this stuff is going to come in handy and make sure that you don't recycle anything that's really sort of valuable to you but basically what you do is run through a small monument grab as much as you can dump it all into the recycler and now you're going to get a ton of metal fragments and what this allows you to do is hit that end not end game but get that sheet metal door so that your base won't at least be raided if i don't have too much time that's a nice little sort of trick that i like to use to just get that door in fast and log off next up a few of you guys probably don't know this but you can actually put cans into a campfire and get metal fragments from that much like my last tip if you're just starting the game that's a good way to get metal fragments if you really need it and along with that those of you guys who are starting the game are going to want to know this if you go to a river you're going to be able to find food so many people comment on my videos they say how do i find food how do i find it how do i get it just go right here go to one of those rivers there's a ton of food there eat to your heart's content become obese do whatever you want now next Next up, we're going to be talking about building. So if you're if, if you're not that good at Rust, right, and you don't want to be building these gigantic bases and defending them 24-7, a sort of good way to go, in my opinion, is to build a bunch of little bases. Build two or three bases throughout the map, somewhat close to each other, so you can sort of get between them, but not so close that they're going to both be raided in succession, because the worst, you know, worse than having one base raided is having two. So if you can create two bases decently far apart, what's going to happen here is you keep your loot in both bases. Bases, so 50% one base, 50% another, split it up somehow, and basically now when you get raided, you're going to be starting from, you know, 50% instead of zero. It makes it a lot easier, and you're not going to get wiped out mid-raid and just hate your life. So yeah, I always, I always do at least a couple bases, and on that note, the shittier your base looks, the better, especially when you're going with small bases like that. If this base looks like shit, a lot of people are just going to skip over it, because it's got wood doors, it's, it's in a straight line, it looks horrid, one of the walls is soft side out oh my god this guy knows nothing i'm gonna skip over and not raid him well that's good for you because now your base just didn't get raided because they thought you didn't have anything all right now next up this is gonna seem fairly obvious but with monuments and with pvp in rust one of the key things to do is know your locations so for instance in junkyard you can go up to this location and get a beautiful overview of a huge part of this monument and that's gonna allow you to shoot players from up top and keep yourself decently protected just watch your behind but if you've got two players you can have one guy watching your back and one guy taking shots you're good to go. It's also got a recycler, so that's a good thing to do too. And while we're talking about PvP, here's the other thing about Rust. It's all about stealth, right? If you're a PvPer and you're out there and you're fighting people face to face, then it comes down to shots, it comes down to aim, it comes down to everything like that. But if you hide in the shadows and wait, 
you'll find someone who's probably better equipped than you and you can take them out and get all their loot. So if you want to snowball, if you want to get a fast start, this is a good way to do it. In this case, I got a nice little python and a hazmat suit. Now, along with PVP, there's these things called PVP servers. If you go to a PVP server, they're going to have a few options. You can fight players using a variety of guns, pretty much any gun that Rust has available. And that's going to be great for just training against other players, making your aim better and everything like that. And you can go to a specific zone where you just shoot bots. And this is a great way to aim train. This is going to get you down and this is going to get you used to sort of the spray of each gun. And what you're going to notice is that each gun in Rust has a different spray. So if you go into one of these PVP servers, you can test out a few different guns and figure out which one's the best for you. As you can see here, different guns shoot up in a different pattern. I'm not moving my mouse at all. I'm just shooting. And look at this spray. The spray varies so much based on the gun. And honestly, it's going to give you a good idea for what guns you want to go for and what guns you don't. In my case, I'm horrible with the AK, so it's not a gun I want to use. Uh, anyways, that's all the tips I've got for you guys today. Hopefully, this video helped you guys out. If you have questions, comments, anything like that, leave them down below. As always, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Help me help you get better. If you subscribe, if you like, that tells me that this video helped. I'm going to come out with some more tips, tricks, and everything like that. Everything short of cheating, I'm going to tell you how to do it and we're both can get better at rust together so um yeah i look forward to seeing you guys in my next video let me know say what's up down below and until next time peace